The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat peer-to-peer. Wow. Aha, we uh, got upgrade. a new intro. We upgraded, guys. <laughs> nice intro, man. I like it. I like That's it. That's a lot to live up to. I don't know if I can handle it. <laughs> that person did a really good job. We have a, a, a uh, we're still waiting on a few segments, but we're going to be. Uh, I thought we were going to throw body in there, though, wasn't it? The... Yeah, but it, we just didn't. It, they're working on it. Okay. okay. <laughs> Coming soon. Coming soon. <laughs> body, what's going on, man? Oh, not much. Just uh, chilling. How are you guys doing? Good, chilling, good. chilling. All's good. All's yeah. Good. So another another crazy week. I saw, you know, there were blood, I guess, blood in the streets this week, it's fair to say. There was a little bit. We took one on the chin, you could say, but um, it really wasn't all that bad. Like it was a 5% drop. It looks very much to me like it could have just been liquidating the longs. Um, apparently price needs more time to consolidate before it's going to decide to do one thing or another, whether that's go up or down. So, yeah, right. but you know, I mean, stuff falls and people lose their heads and they, they run around all over the place and they're, they're scared. It's kind of the point, you know. What's with this guy who Monero Bull, who I see on Twitter, and then he's like, "Well, I don't understand why he calls himself Monero Bull, and he seems to be <laughs> so emotionally affected by these uh, these prices." I don't know if it's like a parody or a satire account. I can't one, figure it out. One of our guys was offering to buy his account off of him for one Monero. I can't remember who it was now, but that was like two days ago. <laughs> yeah, it's maybe it's uh maybe he's ratty. I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Monero Bull, jump on anytime. Ratty got reinstated in the XMR trader group. He, uh, The accusation was that he was posting from like three different accounts. And he kind of was, but typically not consecutively. But he was like our local resident perma bear. Yeah, Ratty was, yeah, for those who don't know, right? Ratty was like just constantly like talking Monero down, right? Monero price down no matter what. Right. He, he loves Monero. Like he talks good about the technology, but the price, he's always just like so bearish. It might be that he just lost so much money. So he's like setting his own expectations low, you know, so he, so he doesn't get uh, too too excited, get his hopes up. Or just trying to accumulate more. Keep, Could be. keep a cap on it. Keep it down. Yeah, he's he's the rodent incident on, uh, on the XMR trader group now. Right, hey, but... Have y'all heard of the prophecy? No. There's a, I don't know who made it up, uh, but there's like this prophecy that one day in XMR Trader, there will be zero comments and that will be the start of a glorious, magnificent bull market. But uh, we can't like, we can't chide anyone. We can't, it has to happen organically. We can't tell people like, hey, don't post so the prophecy can be true. It has to be like an organic thing. And wait, why, why would that lead to the... Uh... Like this event, what's the what's the thinking there? Who started? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, prophecies are you know they're from on high. Like, uh, who am I to judge? <laughs> who 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 made this pro? Who was like the first to uh, speak of this prophecy? You know, that's a good question. I should I should go inquire about that. Right, right, right. I just I just I just believed it. Like as soon as I heard it, I said, "Oh yeah, of course. Why not?" It was probably right, so, so that he could always then comment and ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually been pretty good there we've been so close there was like one time it was 8 p.m we were almost there and someone was like slow day today but you know we can't tell him we can't be like hey yo don't mess up the prophecy because then yeah. like it doesn't count exactly Shit. <laughs> no right, well, speaking of prophecy hopefully i can prophesy some directionality here for people on these markets i don't know <laughs> let's do it i'm not i'm not too convinced one way or another but um so this week was interesting because stocks seem to rebound off of their uh, off a of very natural support line, whereas crypto just kind of crashed back down. We saw a divergence where crypto went down, but stocks were going up, which doesn't typically happen. And that's not the kind of um, decorrelation that people were hoping to see. But um, oh, and yeah, guys, if you're on Twitter spaces, recommend that you get on YouTube. Make sure you're on 720p. That way you can see all the charts we're going to talk about. Uh, so right now we're looking here at total market cap. And um, we're going to look at the, the big view and then the small view. So basically, you've got these two big trend lines. Um, you can see that the bottom trend line comes from way, you know, way back in the past, 2015. And it's pretty much the only way that you could draw those lines at this point. And we're sitting just below those. Uh, I remember saying a few months ago that it's going to be really difficult to get above um, these upsloping trend lines. And uh, it seems to have been a bit of a problem so far. But that doesn't mean that we can't get above them. Uh, it just means that, you know. Currently, we need more time. So we're basically retesting this very 
this sort of uh, zone of resistance on these uh, these downsloping uh, trend lines here. So we really want to hold this for total. Just the fact that it's even kind of like wicking down below that. I don't like that. That's not strength. That's not really what you want to see in a market that, you know, where you want to be convinced that things are going to go up. Still, though, I would say that overall the structure is still here. It's still intact. Um, total is still flirting with being it's basically below this FTX doom level. Total just can't seem to get above that level. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. FTX was probably involved in the artificial leverage and pumping of a whole bunch of shit coins. And now that they're gone, you know, those shit coin market caps are just not coming back. Um, and it might be difficult for them to come back. It could take quite some time. But um, let's go ahead and uh, turn off the broad view lines and we'll go to the shorter term so that we can see the more local structure. Oops, there we go. Okay, so this is our more local structure after we pumped off of the bottom here. We're still kind of writing in this, um, it's really a broadening structure. So basically we've just come down here to test the bottom. Obviously this isn't really where you wanna be. This always makes you uncomfortable because there's always the possibility that this breaks down and does this and then does that. So hopefully price will give us enough advance notice so that we can get out of the market if, if things like that happen, if those developments, uh, if those developments happen. Um, I don't know if I have it drawn up, but that's basically what happened on a much longer time frame. That's what happened right here, um, where you could have like drawn these lines a couple different ways. And then, uh, you know, we basically kind of broke through the, the highest one and then we kind of like progressively worked our way down. And then, um, yeah, I mean, just totally broke down from there. So uh, hopefully we don't see kind of a similar pattern develop, but right now that does look like it could happen that that wouldn't be out of the question here so um just be careful out there at this point uh i do tend to think that as long as the rest of the market is looking good crypto should be able to make a recovery uh it's very plausible that all this that this five percent candle drop right here was just uh liquidating longs um stop hunting that kind of activity you know happens all the time it's typical trader activity whether you're in crypto or traditional markets so uh bitcoin looks very similar Slightly different uh, structure on the chart. Let's go to the daily view. So again, we're kind of like in this zone right here. We're holding the lower one just fine, but we we haven't quite managed to break out of this, uh, like the most shallow way that you could draw the line, right? We got basically rejected there. It was looking plausible that we might be able to make it up, but uh, then it just came right back down. So um, yeah, I mean, at this moment, you can see also that uh, we're still kind of trending along and having trouble getting above this very, very long uh, trend line that starts back from 2015. Again, it's really the only way that you could connect 2015 to uh, to the current price action. So that's that's one reason for me it's significant. Um, you can draw these lines a whole bunch of different ways, and they're significant at different um, at different time frames. Um, but right now, this is the only one that uh, that's significant. So I have all the other ones turned off. If we go to the four hour here, and we'll go to the more local structure. Uh, you can see basically the same thing. Bitcoin is uh, just kind of trending in this uh, in this broadening structure channel right here. Uh, bounced off the bottom, bounced off of that right there really nicely. One thing that gives me a lot of consolation here that uh, it's very likely that we could be okay, that everything could be fine, um, just volatility, is because the S&P uh, and the NASDAQ looks the same pretty much as the S&P. But basically, we've got our, our entire bear market, right? There was the top in uh, in January. And we came up through that line. This is a natural place to experience some resistance. We're testing the bottom of this, right, where that natural bear trend is, and then we bounce right off it. I tweeted earlier this week about how um, this is kind of like a do or die point, like the market, the, the stock market really does need to hold this line. And so far, so good. Like it bounced very strongly off of that line on Thursday and Friday. Crypto didn't go along, but um, there are some, there are a few things here in the crypto markets that could be weighing. So for one, um, Silvergate. Uh, Silvergate, probably most people don't know about it, but Silvergate is this corporation. It's a bank that sort of ties in all of the big regulated exchanges together. Most of the regulated exchanges have had exposure to Silvergate and Silvergate had exposure to FDX. And basically they released a press statement earlier this week saying that they're not sure if they're going to make it, that they might actually go bankrupt. So they crashed like 51% after having like already a terrible, terrible chart. Let me see if I can find that chart. I might have it. So eight. Yeah, so you can see that Silvergate is down by substantial amounts from the top. 
So that's 95%. <laughs> and then it dropped another 58%. So what is that? That's a total of 98% down. So again, Silvergate is like this really big corporation, big bank that that a lot of crypto exchanges, regulated exchanges use for liquidity and keep funds with them. So um, that could be weighing on the market. There's another thing too that happened that's kind of, um, I, to me, it looked like a little bit of FUD. In other words, it wasn't quite accurate. So people are saying that the Gox coin is gonna be released on March 10th, and that's not true. Um, but March 10th is the final drop deadline for the last input that any of the early lump sum uh, payees need to like confirm their information after March 10th, that cutoff is done. And then the Gox trustee is free to disperse the payments whenever they want. And they are required to do it at some point between March 10th and September 30th. So they could do it at any point in that window, but it's like the ultimate last deadline thingy, whatever, before the Gox, the Gox trustee is able to make the pay the payouts. So, um, so people were saying, Oh, the, the Gox coin are going to get released on March 10th. Uh, so maybe that's kind of weighing on the markets as well. I tend to think that they probably will wait. They have just opted to wait as long as possible at every single turn. Even the September 30th deadline was pushed three months ahead. So, uh, but that should be good time frames, absent like some crazy thing that goes on in the courts. Who knows, right? Um, so anyways, uh, that's kind of a couple maybe fundamental things going on, um, sociological news events, whatever that, that could be. Uh, part of the reason why stocks and crypto diverged were crypto diverged to the downside. Um, so I don't know. We'll just have to see. There's a good chance we can bounce back next week. Um, that's what we really want to see from here, right? Like, okay, you're still in the structure. It makes sense. Everything's fine. But you really do need to see a strong bounce up to at least this splitter right here. So uh, hopefully that's what we get. Um, oh, you know, I also wanted to show you guys some of the descriptive statistics. So these, uh, these blue lines here are the standard deviation for the entire lifetime of Bitcoin. So it's like if you took every single candle from the start of this chart all the way through, that's what these blue lines are. And they're like, they're continuously computed. So at every single point, it takes all of the data from before. Whereas normally when you compute like a moving, uh, a moving average or a moving standard deviation, normally that's, um, it's only taking like say 10 candles back or a hundred or a thousand candles back. Um, it, it doesn't normally go over the entire data set that exists up until that point. So it's like it's a continuously computed moving average, and uh, which is the white line, and then standard deviation, which is the blue line. So basically, we're kind of just hanging out, flirting with this um, inside the standard deviation range. Um, there's one more thing. It's That's actually not quite right because that chart doesn't have the full price history of Bitcoin. So let me let's take a look at it uh, with BLX. So BLX has the full price history of Bitcoin. Okay, so... We're basically sitting here in between uh, standard deviations. Um, one of these is called the geometric standard deviation. That's the, the fainter line. Um, they're both standard deviations, but you can do some, some trickiness to deal with the expon uh, exponential nature of the chart. So you kind of get two separate lines. So I like to look at them both. At any rate, we're kind of just trending on the upper standard deviation, which has tended to be kind of like the bull market zone. Like people, people like to talk about um, which moving average or which set of moving averages is your, is your bull market support band. I kind of like the standard deviation better. Um, it's simpler. It's more straightforward. Uh, and over the price history, uh, it has tended to basically signify that we're in, in a bullish setup. So you can see right here, like this was basically the bottom in between these lines was the bottom uh, last bear market. Um, and then we actually dip below that. So overall, um, you know, not, nothing too crazy going on here, but, uh, you know, just uh, just for your edification. Uh, let's see here. We can take a look at Bitcoin dominance. Um, I was expecting this was going to go up all the way to um, to the top of this range here. So this white line, uh, this line right here, I was expecting we'd go all the way up there. Um, you can kind of see I drew these lines here where it looked like the chart was going exponential, uh, but then we basically broke down. So at this moment, we're kind of sitting in this triangle uh, or at least with this overhead resistance. Um, I don't really have any strong opinions on what happens here with Bitcoin dominance. People, I've heard maximalists say that, you know, dominance is going to 70 or 80 to 90%. They still think that even though it's been almost two years at this point, and it's been below 50%. I just think that if dominance was going to do that, now is the time for it to do that. FTX collapsed. A lot of the support for all the shit coins fell out. And you would think that should be the opportunity for, um, you know, for dominance to really make a break to the upside. But so far, it's basically just kind of range bound. Um, I would anticipate that we'll probably just be range bound for a very long time. Um, let's take a look at Ethereum and Bitcoin as well. So... <clears throat> Uh, we were talking about how there's this very long trend line and there's these fundamental event 
and Ethereum happening where it's called Shanghai. They're going to unlock everyone's stakes. Um, so it's kind of basically just like writing this very, very long support line, um, which is interesting because normally when you break down, like that was a clear breakdown. Normally you would expect for this thing to continue going down, but instead um, it's really just kind of rode this line up as if it was a trend line. So, I mean, I guess it's possible this thing could still kind of take a, a dip to the downside. You could almost say, okay, that was a break, retest, and then it could go down again. Um, but at the same time, it, I, I don't know, like there's there, there's a load of people waiting to get into the Ethereum staking smart contract, which means that anyone that unstakes is going to have to wait to get back into it. So if I'm a staker, which I'm not, but if I was, I would think to myself, do I really need to unlock that stake? Do I really need that money right now? Can I come, can I come up with that money somewhere else? Um, so I tend to think that, I just don't think that this stake unlock is going to be a huge negative price event. Like it might temporarily be, uh, so it should get released here in March sometime in the next uh, like four weeks. So it might temporarily take a dip only to come right back up. That that could very easily happen. Um, so I don't know. We'll just have to see. Uh, let's take a look here on the Z-scores. Uh, Z-scores are slowly, you would say that they're trending down, but they're actually just, um, they're just showing less and less volatility, right? Uh, price is just being, uh, the Ethereum Bitcoin chart is just being more and more constrained. So, okay. Anyways, enough about Ethereum. Who cares, right? Uh, <laughs> let's go to Monero. Um, so Monero right now is sitting in between um, basically that's that huge sideways triangle that we've had for a long time now. Um, there we go. Okay, so yeah, basically this is the way to draw that bottom line, the, the one that makes the most sense, or at least that's the most relevant for price action now. Um, I really don't like hitting this line one, two, three times like that. You know, it's like, okay, first touch, long time, long time, that, 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 right? You, you feel like, you feel like that's not a good chart structure. I don't, I don't like that personally. I really would not have wanted to come down and retest this line, but um, I do feel like it would take the entire crypto market crashing um, badly to see an hour break through that line. So um, again, at the moment, everything still looks relatively okay. We're on the low side of the trends, but but everything should be generally generally fine. Uh, let's see here. We've got maybe a little bit of um, it's not divergence, but essentially we're just like trending the, the RSI and the Z scores are all trending in the same direction. Um, on the daily, I guess there's nothing too interesting there. Uh, if we go down to the smaller time frame, um, I guess in hindsight, you know, this was kind of a, a bit of a bear flag. You know, you come down, you go up, and you have a slight uptrend, but then it goes down uh, to the downside. So at this moment, you might be able to say that we've got a little bit of divergence here on the short time frames. So that would be uh, setting lower highs on the uh, on the Z scores, except for this kind of spike down here. That's that doesn't invalidate the pattern or anything, but um, you know, it does kind of. You don't like to see that, but at any rate, uh, we're setting lower lows on price, but we're setting higher lows on the Z scores. This could very well go to the top of the range. Um, that's kind of, I mean, that would be my play. That would be what I would expect if I was going to trade Monero right here. Uh, I would say this is probably a good opportunity for a bounce. Um, so long as, you know, so long as everything else doesn't break down. Um, we got Bitcoin Monero. And yeah, we, we're coming pretty close to that 006 level here. Um, let's see. Technically, that would be exactly right uh, here. Close enough. So, um, yeah, I mean, I would like to say that we're done going down. I, it's hard to really believe that. Oh, this is the weekly time frame. Yeah, so we're looking at very, very big, broad time frames. Um, let's see. I mean, overall, like, almost every other OG altcoin has just seen significant downside. Litecoin, for example, set new lower lows relative to Bitcoin, this bear market. Um, so did Bitcoin Cash, and so did basically all of them, um, except for Ethereum. And, you know, that's kind of a different use case. Uh, coin. So overall, I mean, Monero is still trending in the upper half of from where it launched and well above um, the initial launch crash, uh, you know, during that bear market, which well, maybe wasn't the perfect timing on launch. Usually you want to launch at the end of a bear market, not not the beginning of one. But, uh, you know, it's still better to, to just to get the thing going, because, right, that, that's number go up kind of stuff, not uh, not digital freedom money kind of talk. So, um, you know, that's just the DJ in, in me talking right there. Okay, so uh, I'll go down a little bit closer to the daily time frame. Um, let's take a look at the overall stats, actually, and see where we're at. Okay, yeah, so we're basically trending. See these white lines here that just popped up? Uh, that's the moving average. Again, that's a geometric moving average and a regular moving average. Um, 
I won't get too crazy into explaining what a geometric moving average is, but it's basically you take the logarithm of price, you take the average, and then you do the inverse logarithm to translate back to regular price. And you do this to sort of deal with exponential processes. Both moving averages are important. They both seem to signify important things. So um, like, for example, as a very, very rough estimate, you can see that down here, um, that was kind of like a limiting factor for a while. And then hopefully we're taking the lifetime geometric moving average and this should flip into support. If we can move to the top, that would be a very nice sign for, for XMR BTC. Um, so um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not really what we wanna see. The other thing too, is you, you can take a look on XMR versus ETH and we kind of broke that down. You know, we had this nice channel that we had to redraw that channel and then we broke down there. Um, this is just not good. Like, honestly, like even if we come up here and just like touch that, that would just be a retest of that line and could easily go down further. Um, if hypothetically we do see crypto go on a sustained or continued sustained run here uh, going into April, uh, May, maybe even June, July, and we see Ethereum performing, especially perhaps after Shanghai, right after that FUD, or maybe it's not totally FUD, maybe the network dies after they unlock stakes. It should be fine. They've been really good about their hard forks in the past. So, but after that's out of the way, you could see Ethereum making big gains if the macro supports that, um, which, I mean, as much as we don't like to admit that can be problematic for XMR price, um, especially on something like Ethereum, when like the hype is just growing for that chain and it just keeps it keeps growing. Um, they keep innovating. Like it, you can kind of look at that and say, OK, what does the market want? What do the, what does the crowd want? Um, they want innovation. They want hard forks. They want you to upgrade. Um, and Ethereum shows that, right? Monero shows that. So it's it's kind of hard to like look at Bitcoin and just be so stagnant because it's my opinion that they're going to do a backdoor CBDC on ETH via BlackRock and USDC. And the longer that Bitcoin refuses to raise the block size, to me, that's like, that's just handing the victory over because it's like, okay, Monero can't quite scale on chain. Not today. Maybe in a couple decades, sure. Uh, a decade or more. But I see Lightning Network is maybe the only viable on uh, maybe not on-chain scaling, but the only viable scaling option that we have. And for all its flaws, I would still like to support Bitcoin. Um, and I would just like to see them raise the block size, but I don't think that'll ever happen. So it's kind of like, uh, I don't know. Anyways, things just seem to be moving towards ETH, but okay, whatever. Um, just just know that just know that's a reality here. That's know that's a reality that we're facing on the XMR versus Ethereum chart. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I, I hate to, you know, have to bring that out, but, you know, this is, uh, this is the price report, so I got to tell you what the price looks like um, without, uh, it's hard. I, I have such a hard time delivering bad news for the XMR price report. It's not bad news yet, you know, it's just not as good news as maybe we would hope. Um, so what are you saying ultimately, Bonnie, that you're saying that uh, ETH is growing against, potentially growing against Monero here? Um, yeah, so this is XMR versus Ethereum ratio. And ultimately, there is a lot of hype. There's a lot of interest all going into ETH. You've got a lot of institutions that are that are moving that direction. Um, and overall, this chart to me doesn't look all that great. Um, like this looks like a chart that could very easily come back up, test this lower line, and then come back down again at some point. Now, I would love to be wrong here. And again, this is all probabilities. When we're talking about price, it's I'm saying, okay, here's what I think the greatest probability is. Here's what the chart structure would indicate um, is the more likelihood or the more likely possibility. But yes, I do see Ethereum. I do see uh, the ratio here between Monero and Ethereum as having problems for the next few months, um, especially if we continue uh, this kind of bullish run that we started back in January. So, um, but I do think I do think Monero versus Bitcoin could easily keep up. I do think that chart is one that could end up um, basically range bound. So. Um, Overall, I mean, that's what that's what I would let's go to the weekly again so we can see this better. Overall, that's that's what I would see on the Monero Bitcoin chart is um, is the likelihood of finding a bottom here uh, and then kind of doing this kind of action. Maybe if we do that, then we could break to the top side. Um, I do think that we have negative price action coming later this year. Uh, maybe it happens sooner than that. I don't know. Um, I still I'm still kind of like game on. My mentality here is still game on. I'm still hodling my positions. Um, you know, if if things break the wrong direction quickly, I'll get out of my positions quickly. And that could be, you know, in the middle of the week that could I could give you a price report on Saturday and then things could break down on Monday and I might just be out of most of my positions. Um, but at any rate, um, 
I do think that a, a return of the bear market later this year will be positive for the Bitcoin uh, XMR BTC ratio. So, um, oh, you know, we haven't looked at the the, uh, the divergences. So the divergences look to me like um, they're basically neutral uh, minus Q coin. Q coin is like all over the place. So let's just let's mute them for a second. OK, bye bye Q coin. So over the past week, we've basically seen uh, we've been down, we've been up, down, up. So we're basically oscillating around the zero point. Um, so that's that's really what you want to see here on these price divergences. This is we don't I really don't want to see them accumulating and I don't want to see them uh, having negative price divergences. I'd rather them just leave our price alone. They can't seem to help themselves, but uh, you know that's just what they do. So, uh, OK, maybe the last thing we could talk about here is stocks. I think we basically talked about it already. Um, we looked at the S&P, basically bounced off that strong support. Um, we've also got uh, the NASDAQ here, same deal, right? It came down to the... Uh... Now, the cool thing about the NASDAQ uh, that, that's inspiring, it's like hope inspiring, is that it could have broken down all the way to the lower line down here, right? And then been limited and had problems. But instead, so far, it looks like it's done a nice bounce this Friday. It, it bounced off of that support line. Um, this is the kind of action you would really... You want to see it kind of come up here, do something like that, and then break through. Uh, that would be like an ideal scenario. I think something like that is probably more likely than breakdown right here. Um, another one is the Shanghai index, so also called the SSE Composite Index. This is China. It's basically like uh, the summary of stocks for China. And they're basically in this rising wedge pattern. And you'll notice that they found support before they even got to the lower part of the line, which is bullish. And now they're pressing up against the top of this line, and they have been all the way through. So... I really, really want to see China, Shanghai break through the top of this line next week and then find some support and then go off to the races. Shanghai has been a leading indicator for crypto and stocks for like the past two years. Um, it was breaking down well before the bear market and stocks and crypto happened. And it was pumping just slightly before the, the crypto pump started in 2020. So um, yeah, we're looking at this should, should hopefully like it, it does inspire confidence. Um, uh, let's see, anything else? Maybe Z-scores. Overall, we're looking at Z-scores continue to trend up on the S&P. So that's nice. That's good. Um, overall, the signals I'm seeing are all still pretty much game on. There's a little bit of problems here with the um, repo, the overnight repurchase agreements, uh, the reverse repos. So again, this is money held with the Fed, uh, Federal Reserve overnight. And we had a nice downtrend uh, we basically kind of came back to the moving average right here. That's the 100-day moving average. So um, for now, this downtrend is stalled. That doesn't necessarily mean that uh, that the markets have to crash or anything like that. Um, but it does kind of give you the picture, the idea of consolidation here. Um, the dollar index uh, was in this uh, rising wedge here, and then it broke down this week, kind of retested that, and then came back down. And this red candle right here on Thursday, uh, or not Thursday, on Friday, um, that's kind of a, let's see if it's not an engulfing pattern, but, uh, there was another engulfing pattern. This red candle right here on the breakdown was actually an engulfing pattern where price looked like it was going up and then it actually red dildoed all the way back to the bottom. So, um, right now you would look at this and you'd say, okay, Dixie has probably, you know, it's probably towards the negative end of uh, things here. Um, although it could just kind of go sideways for a while. That's, that's very possible here. Um. But overall, on a larger structure, Dixie does look to me like um, it has resumed some kind of uptrend. And while this might need to go down, I would expect it's going to find support at some point. And then um, at some point, I do expect it should at least touch that splitter. Um, the larger picture on Dixie does look to me uh, like it's maybe not bullish, not bullish like it was during the bear market, you know, uh, last year, but still bullish kind of a reversal from this big downtrend that we had. Um, starting at the end of last year that kind of helped to drive the recent um, bullish action. So um, uh, last thing, this time I promise last thing. Uh, so <laughs> uh, you can see this crazy drop that crypto had. These are the Z-scores. So Z-scores, like they tell you, they can, they let you compare different asset classes right next to each other because it accounts for the volatility of that particular asset class because you're referencing everything to moving averages. So anyways, um, crypto took a big drop right here and then kind of basically recovered. And you can see where stocks stocks came up quite well. So, um, yep, I would say overall general big picture here is um, be a little bit nervous, but don't be that nervous. Keep your 
keep your positions on the board, keep your chips in play. Um, if things break down, then start selling, right? If things start breaking down, then slowly start getting out uh, or maybe quickly get out. But <laughs> panic. <laughs> <laughs> just keep your eye on the markets. How's that? Just keep your eye on the markets and just know that if you're in profits right here, if things start breaking down, you need to take some profit. You need to lock in some of those gains. But for now, everything still looks okay. So. All right. Or you could do what I do and just slowly accumulate Monero. <laughs> I hodl DCA. Yeah. 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 So it's like that, those gymnastics things, you know, where yeah. it's like, I, I would love to be able to do what you do. I just don't have the patience and the time the to, patience? Devote, to devote to it. Cause you got to, otherwise you, yeah. you get burnt. You got to like constantly be on it, man. I, I've you, so you much realized that the past few weeks. So after, after I went to an Arcapulco, I just haven't been in the charts nearly as much as I have been for the past few months. And I look back and I'm like, dang it, man, I, I can see these little things that I missed these little signs, these little indicators. And I'm like, well, that's what I get for not being on top of it every day. Yeah. I mean, I check it every day, but really like for me personally, like if I'm absorbing charts and looking at different stuff and doing different analytics and I don't know, doing stuff like look at the NASDAQ versus the S&P, um, compare different assets across each other. Like it's it like forms this nebulous cloud of information in your brain that it starts to coalesce into a cogent picture. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, you know, you got to spend hours a day doing that where it's yeah, like, OK, yes. I might check the charts like 30 minutes, you know, 30 minutes a day is, is not nearly the same thing. Yeah, you're, not, you're not getting the whole picture. Body, thank you so much, man. As thank always. you. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Cheers. Stick Cheers. around. All right. Man. All right. I will. Actually, I do want to see um, uh, Dark Fi. Oh, I forget yes. her name. Yeah. Your guest. We awesome. will get to her soon. We'll get to her soon. We're gonna do cool. that. Thank you, Bobby. For those uh, listening in on Spaces, you can watch us on YouTube. Obviously, I guess it's, it's more. It's a lot more entertaining if you're watching, seeing the charts, <laughs> opposed to Bobby just talking about them. Uh, and in general, it's better to watch on YouTube. But if uh, Twitter's the only way, please stay there. And then at the end of the show, we jump into the Spaces where you can ask questions, and uh, hopefully, Darkfy can stick around and answer some questions.